ion, James Whistler in Acid Yellow. And in this video, we're going to look at some of the features of applications which have been generated using ion speed design. So I've opened up Designer, as you can see here, and I don't currently have an application open or active within the product. I'm going to build a new application, and then in building this, we can see that all of the features that have been generated by Designer are literally being generated from scratch directly into this application, uh, rather than us having to build them or customize them as we go. I'm going to use the Riesling um, page style here, rather than picking anything else particular. And I'm going to use the sampling database that ships with the product. Give us that I can build something and, and run us through it and have a look at what we generate. I'm not I'm going to cut the video through at this point, uh, rather than running you through all the detail of how we go about building this. Um, just to get us straight through into a generated application so we can have a look at the output. So as you can see here, I've completed generating my sort of demo of a simple application. I'm going to close this down and we'll open it up in a browser so that we can have a look at some of the content and the features within the pages. So as our application has come up in the browser, let's have a look around the page and have a look at some of the features that designer has included. Across the top of the page, we have our header control with a logo at the top here. As you can see in this case, there's a default logo that's been loaded in for the Acme Food Company. Of course, we can customize that within our the look and feel or themes of our page. Underneath that, we have a multi-level uh, ASPX menu. And if I hover on this menu, you can see that I get drop-down controls, which are automatically taking me to the relevant pages within that section. So of the tables that I've built my application for, categories, orders, products, etc., I have a similar menu structure which pops down dynamically uh, underneath there, enabling me to rapidly navigate to the page that I'm looking for. At this point, of course, we're looking at the categories table page, and um, we'll run through this page before we go and have a look at some of the other types. Underneath there, we've got our centered uh, main content panel, in this case, this is showing me category information. And we have running down here the row detail for each of the different categories that exist within the database. Moving over to the right, though, before we go down and look at that content, we've got three separate controls. One which is going to pop open uh, an action bar or box, uh, giving us uh, additional controls available. That's going to enable us to add a new record, and you can see designers also put two tips onto these icons for us. We can write this content out to a PDF report, a Word report, an Excel report, or we can import data into this table. We can pop that in a button to make that pop up go away. In addition, we have a filter pop-up, which will enable us to rapidly select and filter the table content based on various criteria. In addition, we can choose which of the columns and meaningful columns within that table we'd like to sort the data by. We've also got a reset button. We'll see that we can reset the filters at any point, particular point. Clearly in this case we've only got two particular options, um, but you may well customize your filter content and not have many filters in the picture and have a great deal easier for the user. Click my cross again. Over on the right hand side, at the very far right, we then have a search box. And you'll see that this is Ajax enabled. If I begin typing in there, the designer will automatically generate a suggested list of categories which will match the search criteria that I've entered. And in this case, I've typed BEV. Designers come back and suggest that I may be looking for beverages. Now, the nature of how that uh, search box responds to my typing, or the user's typing as you go, is entirely customizable. Below that, then, we then have a number of different rows of data. Um, and in the beginning of each row, we've got two different uh, control buttons. One is going to navigate us to the edit record page for the record that we've selected what we're looking at. And the second one is a delete option. And then to the right, everything that we're looking at is either uh, labeling information or data that's come from the database that we've built this application against. So first of all, here on the left, we have an image. Uh, which is showing us a, a picture of what might exist within that category. You'll have noticed as I hover on that image, uh, or on the thumbnail of it, uh, it will zoom up automatically and give me a kind of dynamic pop-up that will show me that enlarged. 
once again, we can customize all of that content. But the key part is to show that designers build that for you out of the box without you having to do any work to do that. Simply by recognizing that the content of that field is, is a, a blog object or a binary object, and as a consequence, is likely to be an image. Click on the image button to make that go away. Over on the right hand side, slightly further, we've got labeling which has been taken from the label names within the categories table in the database. And then we've got data. So here we're looking at the category name of beverages. We obviously have a description relating to that category. But then underneath it, we have yet another uh, binary column in the database. In this case, we have an attachment, um, a PDF file. And once again, designers automatically recognize that that may well be downloadable content and built this up down there with the link, which will enable us to download that and stream it down from the server down to our client browser. So that's a, a very brief or fairly rapid run through uh, the content of a typical table page. I'm going to navigate now over to an edit record, and look at the edit record for beverages, and have a look at what we have on a, in, in terms of generated content directly in this edit page. At this point, of course, we're now editing the beverages category. At the top here, we have an automatically generated text box, which will enable us to potentially rename or change the name of that category. And underneath this, we have one of the various different types of rich text controls, uh, which will enable us to then uh, format rich text, use such controls such as the button, bolding the fonts, changing font sizes, um, which will be rendered up. We can click a button down here which will enable us to look at the HTML which is building that look and feel um, such that we can understand the way that we're rendering in the browser um, subject, subsequent to us editing. Underneath that we've got a, a file upload control which is going to enable us to upload or possibly replace that PDF that we saw that we could download earlier. And then we have a picture that corresponds to our category again with another file upload control which will enable us to amend that content. Critically underneath here, the designer has automatically generated a table control underneath here for the products that exist within that category. So by recognizing the relationship between the categories table and the products table, designers automatically built us uh, as part of the generation options that we used, that we configured when we would have generated this application, has automatically built us that table underneath. Uh, now many of the controls there are similar to the table that we've seen previously. The key part, of course, is that the data will automatically be filtered such that it's only showing us products that exist within the beverages category. There's one further control on here which designers automatically built us, which is a quit selector, which will enable us to uh, dynamically change the supplier of any one of the products. And again, we'll see if we click that, we get a pop-up come up, which will enable us to select an alternative supplier. And we'll click big quick breweries, we'll see that we go away and our supplier quick selector will automatically change to render the big quick brewery supplier instead. So all of the foreign key relationships uh, between the product and the supplier also being honored there. Designers making intelligent choices based on the, the nature of our database and our schema on what kind of controls we're most likely to want within our page. And one final page style or, or in terms of generated content that I'd like to show you are the categories gallery page. That's what's most important for us. In this case, designer has built us uh, rather than our, our table control simply starting at the top and working vertically down the page. In this case, designer is automatically rendering record controls across the page for us in a very kind of user-friendly format, automatically using the images that correspond to each gallery uh, or each category rather, and then overlaying them with the text content that's come from the description. You can see as I hover over these and move my way around, I can then go and click one of those which will take me through to the edit page for that category again. Again, that page style, that category page that we just looked at, is entirely generated. I haven't done any customization work there whatsoever. And in a similar way to that we have on the sort of more traditional categories table page, I have equivalent controls at the top here to enable me to filter that content dynamically at runtime or add records, etc.
That's a very quick run through uh, some of the features of a generated application. I hope you found it useful uh, in your kind of work with designing and where to possibly start next in terms of customizing your page content. Thanks for watching.